Let's see if this is working. Nice, it's working. Do we have audio? Yeah, we do. Hey everybody. Um, Happy New Year, hope you are doing well. Um, today's little quick presentation will be on um, continuing our thread here on sensor driver, uh, the sensor driver API using drivers, using devices. Um, I got a request in the comments. Hey, you know, how do I set the LAS2DH up for uh, detecting a threshold, a threshold change or basically setting it up so you can put your main processor to sleep while that guy's ready and sitting there uh, and it's gonna set an interrupt if it's gone, if motion has gone above a certain threshold. So we'll run through that real quick. Um, also, today's unofficial sponsor is one of these ratcheting clip guys. I know it's off topic, but it is awesome. I had to replace some of these guys um, on our rice cooker. So it was not bad. So. Not chilling, just really excited about tools. So, let's begin. And I'll switch over to the slideshow. And boom. So, what we're gonna do today is just configure the LS2DH, and then um, we're gonna configure the interrupt two different ways, and then we'll just do it like a follow-on with a program execution. And let me make sure this is set correctly. Oh yeah, I gotta set the window here. That'd be good. Come on. Well, I will revisit that in a second. Let's go. So uh, this is something that probably should be pretty familiar to you all um, if you haven't already seen this, but it is the project that Conf and uh, we'll be setting, uh, enabling I2C, the sensor uh, library, API library, and also the LAS2DH. Important here to also configure the global thread, the trigger global thread. Um, you can either do the triggers through the uh, having it, the having your own thread, or you can do it through the work queue. It really depends on your project, and maybe if you're using the work queue for other things, you want to keep it. You want to leave it alone, then you probably want to use your own thread for the any sensor. Um, most of the sensor API libraries uh, either do either or, so gives you some flexibility. And uh, this is something we've talked about previously. Um, if you haven't checked it out, check out the pre last two previous videos. Uh, they dive in a little bit more onto um, configuration and things like that. Um, speaking of configuration, here is the board overlay. Um, I might have flipped the GPOs on the RIQ GPO definition after this, but uh, this is this is the basic standard. Um, I'm using the NRF9160 Feather. Uh, antenna list, so you can see this guy. So it's, right now it's running in the background and I can, you'll see in a second that I'm, I'm setting it and it's triggering on those motion events, which is awesome. And here we go into the fun stuff. So the um, what we gotta do is fetch the device. So we're gonna use that device DT get uh, macro, then we're getting the first instance of ST underscore, um, basically SD, LAS2DH. Now remember that ST underscore LAS2DH um, is also corresponding to the name of the device binding. So device bindings are generally organized where you have the manufacturer and then you have comma and then you have the name of the device. So um, so in this case it's ST underscore LAS2DH. Uh, and what we'll be doing, let me just make sure this is in the right place. So what you have to do is set the, if you're gonna enable a trigger, this is the, the struct within the sensor library um, where you're gonna be setting that trigger and you have the trigger type and then the channel. And we'll see, you'll see shortly what that looks like. Um, so we're setting that up here. We're setting, for, so for one example is like, okay, what if we, if we set the, sample rate on the device itself to you know, one hertz. So we're checking every second. 
Um, and then what you can do is you can basically say, I want the, the interrupt to trigger when we get that one sample every second. So this is what we're setting up here. We're setting up a data ready trigger, and then we're also setting it for all axes. Now, uh, in the, on this part, uh, you can't really trigger off of one axis, I guess you could say, because they all get sampled at the same time, even if you're not using them. So at, le at least that's what I believe. I could be wrong. If you know better than me, please comment. Um, but then we'll be using the sensor underscore trigger set uh, API. So this is where basically trigger, um, the first argument is the the sensor that we're targeting. Um, the trigger is that is that trigger that we just set. And then the um, trigger underscore handler is actually the handler that gets fired when the trigger happens. And then we're um, obviously checking for any errors on return um, if there's any problems there. So that's one part of it. Now, um, so let's say if we switch gears here and actually wanted to set the device up for a motion sense instead of um, instead of like a data ready, like data ready, it's more of like a hey, I don't really don't want to pull this thing every second. Let me just let me know when the the sensor values are ready. Now for this other option here. Um, what we're doing first is we're setting a sensor value. So we're using the sensor value from the sensor um, API to actually set the threshold value for the device. So um, we use the sensor underscore attribute set function. Um, and again, it takes that first parameter as the sensor itself. And then we're setting the uh, ch channel and then we're setting the type. Um, and, and this this attribute type could be a multiple, multitude of different things. It's all in sensor.h. So if you ever want to look at that header, I kind of went over that header uh, last uh, episode. So if you want to check that out, uh, definitely do it. Um, and then that last parameter is obviously the attribute. So what I'm setting here is um, I'm 1G, and then I want a, th a threshold interrupt uh, 1.5 Gs. So I'm just multiplying by uh, 1.5. So anything over 1.5 Gs is when I want a sensor um, interrupt event. And here's um, the sensor value. So you can use them to, you can send it, use it to set attributes like you just saw, or you can use it, it's also used to actually retrieve the sensor values from the sensor API. So multi-purpose, and just remember it's um, the first value one there is the integer part. So the part before the uh, decimal point and then the last part is the uh, the decimal part so if you're representing decimal numbers that's how they do that in Zephyr and then you can convert it back and forth from um, doubles if you need to things like that yeah moving on um, so here let's see or did I just put the same thing in here yep looks like the same thing but um, so we're setting the the attribute set and then what we're doing is then afterwards we're setting the trigger so um, we're using that um, the trigger struct as you saw before let me run back to that struct sensor underscore trigger so we're setting that here for the the threshold instance so we're setting the type to the delta now this is all up to how the driver is is, is set up essentially um, it could be looking for any of the options there, but in this case, the LAS2DH driver built into Zephyr is looking for the under trig underscore delta type. And then we'll be doing it on any channel. You can also just pick one channel if you want to. So it gives you some flexibility. And again, the important thing here is that sensor underscore trigger set uh, API call. And it takes the same form um, as, it's the same thing as before where you're setting the, the handler, you're setting the trigger, um, information and then also the sensor, but right? you're using the sensor that we've initialized earlier. Um, this is actually the inside of that uh, threshold trigger handler. So I'm just like debug output, getting the time. I'm actually using this to, so for like asset tracking um, instances, you don't really want this thing to keep triggering over and over again, especially if you're on like a bumpy road or it falls and it bumps and rolls around for a minute. So this basically prevents it from, you know, it only update, it only trigger once and then it'll just kind of ignore the other triggers and just go back to sleep. So that's kind of like one way to do it. And you can check out the, I put the NRF uh, 9160 um, 
examples and drivers link in the description and you can check out the tracker demo which i just uploaded uh it's just updated included in the 1.7 ncs 1.7 x branch um you can check it out um and so and of course you can always fetch the um, axis values now one thing to uh, emphasize here is that whenever a trigger happens you're only getting the trigger event it's only you know triggering a gpo this will, will basically throw an interrupt and 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 trigger your code to you know you gotta you got a callback there's no data there so you you'll still if you want to get that data you still have to read it as fast as you can after the event so it might not be the same if it's important to you there are ways to do it but in this case you're not going to get that exact moment when it was triggered you might get it a little bit different a little bit afterwards um so just something to keep in mind i think if you read it fast enough depending on the, the uh on how fast the device is uh, pulling or sampling you'll you'll be fine but so we, we're using that sensor underscore sample fetch channel um we're, we're fetching from the xyz channel remember you can use that uh, you can use an array essentially and and feed that into the sensor channel get function. So we're, um, and then that in the sensor, so we're fetching and that means we're getting the data from the device and then the get call is where we're actually getting the, the data from memory um, and then taking that out and, and filling it up. So those are the, that's the way to get, always get the data from the device essentially. And, oh, wow, that's quick. That was a quick one. So um, I know it's a quick one. What I was going to do is just jump into, if I can get this working, into VS Code and just like, show you what's going on there. Uh, with I modified the accelerometer sample code. Booyah. Here we go. So right now I have it set up for pulling. And what I've also done is I've turned on the accelerometer threshold uh, interrupts here so if you go down I just created this configure motion um, threshold trigger and that is essentially doing the same thing that's happening in the uh, the tracker demo so we're setting that 1.5 G's and we're setting it first with attribute set and then actually setting the trigger and then that th threshold trigger handler is just printing you know Excel threshold trigger so if I if I take this thing go back to the screen so if I take this guy, and you can see if I shake it around, it's going to just trigger a bunch. So useful for any application where you are trying to <laughs> interrupt or wake something up from a, a motion event. Um, very handy, and it's very little power, especially if um, you can put your device to sleep. Um, and in this case, most of the time, the NRF9160 is sleeping. It has that, um, in this case, it's pulling. So when it's pulling, that time delay is actually putting the device fully to sleep, which is nice. Um, so check it out. There are the the polling stuff is in the samples accelerometer. And then um, the other, the setting the threshold uh, is in the tracker demo under source and then motion. So at motion, and then you can just look at those same calls. Um, should be in the init function here. So at motion init, and it just runs through setting the, uh, the trigger here that kind of persists throughout the operation of the whole thing. So hope that is useful. Um, and of course, uh, if you guys have any questions, please let me know. Um, I think a lot of people are out today, probably just getting back to work. Um, and rightfully so. So I will leave you here. Um, thank you so much for joining me. And uh, let me just throw this up here. Make sure you subscribe and give a thumbs up because I really appreciate it. Um, this, the only reason I'm doing this is it's, it's helping people. So if, if this has helped you, uh, please um, thumbs up, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Um, and it'll be same time, same place around next week. Hopefully a little bit earlier. Today's a little bit late, but uh, we'll see you then. Until then, stay safe.